I ready to paint some fabric. So the very first thing you need to do when you're gonna paint is you want to make sure that all of your wrinkles from the store are ironed out. And there's a couple of ways that you have to respect or you're gonna end up with some shoddy ironing. Okay, so I've got an old iron from like, you know, 1999 store. And then you wanna be careful about things like this. This has this little um, pouch in there. If I iron on top of that, I'm going to transfer the shape of that to my bag and I don't want to do that. And then I'm going to use a hard surfaced something in between. And so I'll slide that in there. Slide it in where it's cupped. Okay, and then what you want to do is you want to use a pressing cloth. And I've got just blue paper towels here. Um, and I've got a wetting cloth. So not a wedding like a wedding, but a wet cloth. This gets a little bit of water on it. Squish out the excess. And then what we do is we kind of pre-steam the wrinkles. So come over here, I've got the iron is on high. If I iron directly on my material, it's gonna turn my canvas shiny and we don't want that, so. Just gonna create some steam. Then I take that off. I lay this on. And then I go ahead and just work out the moisture. Be careful where the edge of your board goes off. Don't iron there either. Any, anything that makes a, an edge or um, a pattern or something lumpy is under it will transfer to your fabric and you'll never get it out. So just be aware of that. And then let's take a look and see how much nicer that is than this. So that's how you iron your project. I'm ready to get painting. You can use fabric painting medium if it's important that you don't get any stiffness in the paint. So if you are doing a, um, a t-shirt and you don't want the letters to be like nice and like hard, then you can use the fabric painting medium mixed in with your paints, your regular acrylic paints, and that will keep everything nice and supple and soft. Um, I am doing this purse and I don't need to worry about that. So I am going to just go ahead and paint directly with my medium. All right, so we wanna place our stencil so that it's at, is as even to the top as we can. And then we're going to tape our stencil down. Important right now to go ahead and make sure that you are stuck. Tape doesn't like to stick to fabric very well, so it tends to get the little pills off of the fabric and then it releases its adhesive. So we wanna make sure that we have it as stuck as we can because we don't want it to move. Um, the one thing about painting fabric is it's unforgiving. So um, thankfully most of the fabric that we can find at the craft stores are between five and $10. If you make an error and you need to make a correction, then water is gonna be your friend and timing is gonna be your best friend. So what you would do if you made an error, you would immediately flood with water and rinse out all the paint, but it sticks fast. So just FYI. <clears throat> okay, so got our stencil. Gonna use our dome brush and today instead of swirling, we're going to be stippling because there's texture I want to get the texture into the um, fabric. And we'll go with an offloading um, paper towel. And then we'll swirl a couple of times. And I can have this a little bit heavier loaded because we're on fabric. And I want to hold it down as I'm going. Keep everything nice and clean and tight. You would not scoop and just whomp, go on there like that. So be careful with that. I have mixed number 31 with numbers, I mean, this is black. The numbers are always worn off of those. Did about 50-50. I wanted just something that was a subtle darker than what we have um, on the bag itself. On our website, we have a lot of stencils that can be personalized. So you could make personalized bags, book bags, 
backpacks, all of that kind of stuff. It'd be super fun for gifts. Okay, now I have my board here is a little off center. Okay, that'll keep me on there. You wanna make sure you have something firm underneath. You could try cardboard, but cardboard has that corrugated texture and a lot of times that'll transfer to your painting. So you wanna be careful with cardboard. If you do use cardboard, maybe a piece of hard card stock. Um, for years I've used the um, cut up boxes for, from cereal. So you could put a corrugated cardboard under and then use that cereal box um, as a smoothing element. Okay, let's take a little peek. So we'll just peel back that fabric. Oh yeah, that's a good color, I like it. Okay, but we're gonna jazz it up a little bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we've got these products that are um, metallic lusters, okay? They come in all of these colors. They're just absolutely gorgeous, metallic-y looking. Um, gosh, that's pretty. But I've chosen one already, and I'm going to use the Iced Espresso. And that's what that looks like right there. All right, so I've got a dry brush. I've got my medium. I'm gonna wipe it off on the paper towel and see how that's just really a little glisteny kind of look. It's gonna be really pretty. So now with this, I will go ahead and swirl. It's right over the top. Okay, I'm gonna take a peek. Yeah, that's pretty. Super subtle, I think I'm gonna give it a second coat. A little bolder look. All right, I got out the burnished brass and I'm going to brush mix that. and just give a highlight. To the tops of the letters. Let's see how it looks. Brush in the water. in there. Yeah. That's fun. Super duper fun. Okay, so I think to just do a pick me up, I've got one more idea and I'll be right back. Okay, we are going to use our Dazzling Metallics and this one is in Splendid Gold. We're going to thin it with water. I'm using my oval my White Wonder Rake brush. I'm going to fill my brush with paint and I'm gonna tap off any excess right there. And then I want to go across my moons, anchoring with this big fat brush and then just spattering towards the tops. And now I'm gonna make more fat, which means I'm gonna use more water. I 
Hey, what do you guys think? That spatter technique, I think, is just absolutely perfect. Okay, so now you have a bag that is ready to be a gift. Um, let it dry, and then you'll use your pressing cloth, and you can just heat set your paints. You don't have to, because like technically, if you've ever gotten paint on fabric, you know it doesn't come off. So, um, but heat setting, it just makes it like a thing. You can also, if you're doing a pillow cover, you could stuff it in your um, dryer and do it on a nice high heat, and that will heat set as well. All right, guys, look at how wonderful this looks. Super subtle and super elegant. I hope that you enjoyed the lesson.